Namor's MCU origins were significantly altered from the original comics in Black Panther Wakanda Forever, raising the possibility that he might be a powerful antagonist comparable to Thanos. Although Namor has been modified to fit the MCU, these changes might have an impact on the character's skills, putting him in the running for Marvel's next great villain. In today's video, we'll be talking about how powerful Namor is in comparison to the mad titan Thanos. First, how strong is Namor in Marvel Comics compared to Thanos? Similar to how he was portrayed in the MCU, Thanos is a hugely powerful villain in Marvel Comics. In contrast, Namor poses a rival danger in the comics, but is not quite as well-rounded as Thanos. The power level of Namor the Submariner is objectively much lower than that of the Mad Titan. To distinguish between the virtues of its heroes and villains, Marvel employs a uniform scoring system. The Marvel Power Grid assigns a score of 1 to 7 to each of the six categories in which the characters are evaluated. Namor comes in with a decent 23 out of a possible 42 points, while Thanos Thanos earns an overall score of 36 out of 42. Physically, Thanos and Namor are comparable to one another. With ratings no lower than 6, they both achieve remarkable results in durability and strength. They both receive a 4 for fighting skills as well. However, Thanos is astonishingly swift, achieving a perfect 7 compared to Namor's score of 3 in the category of speed. The Submariner can't stand a chance against Thanos' mental fortitude, although Namor in the comics might. According to the Marvel Power Grid, Thanos has a 6 in both energy and and intelligence, compared to Namor's score of 2. Although Namor may not have Thanos' sharp intellectual capacity, their ideals are similar. Even though the Mad Titan scheme to preserve the universe was twisted, some people still think Thanos was right despite his cruel tactics. Next, what is known about Namor's MCU powers? In Marvel Comics, Namor the Submariner has a variety of abilities. Some of these appear in the MCU. In the comic books, the Avenging Sun is the son of an Atlantean princess and a human explorer, giving him respectable abilities on land and at water. According to the Black Panther Wakanda Forever teasers, Namor appears to be adept at fighting underwater, and mastery of the elements is certainly a possibility. Namor and Aquaman are clearly comparable in terms of skills and origin, but Marvel has cleverly distinguished between the two by choosing to give Namor a Mayan heritage instead of an Atlantean one. In the MCU, Namor and the Tolokan people will have the ability to control water, giving them the power, most notably in Black Panther Wakanda Forever, to use just about any body of water to to surprise their foes. The ability to fly is yet another trait that favors Namor. Although Namor doesn't seem to be able to sustainably hover in the air, his winged feet let him move like a fellow mutant from the MCU, echoing Ms. Marvel's platform-enhanced blasts. Since the Marvel Cinematic Universe offered us a taste of the powers of gods in projects like Moon Knight and Thor Love and Thunder, Namor is a mutant god who has superhuman strength, the ability to fly, and the ability to swim incredibly fast. Moving on, although MCU Namor is extremely powerful, can he defeat Thanos? In the end, Namor is still no match for Thanos, despite his fascinating combination of skills. In the comics, they spar briefly, but Namor's conflict with the younger version of Thanos is interrupted. Though he can't quite equal the strength of someone like Zeus from Marvel Comics, Thanos is still one of the most powerful figures in the series, and his superior intellect provides him a significant advantage over the Submariner. The powers of Kang the Conqueror and Hercules, two recently added MCU heroes, are more comparable to Namor's in the comics. However, in Black Panther Wakanda Forever, Namor won't play the role of a typical bad guy. He acts in the best interests of his people, rather than out of self-interest or selfishness. Namor, like Thanos, only decides to take actions that are morally questionable when his civilization is in danger. This complication solidifies Namor as a more reflexive MCU villain, along with his revised origin story. In this sense, Namor is prepared to fill the void left by Killmonger in Black Panther as a complex enemy. Although Namor may have lacked brains in the comics, don't anticipate this deficiency to remain in Black Panther Wakanda Forever as Marvel attempts to successfully translate yet another multi-dimensional antagonist into the MCU. The comic book character in comic books belonged to a water-breathing branch of humanity and was in no way comparable to any mythological deity. Lastly, what did Ryan Coogler have to say about the MCU character? While nerds frequently compare and contrast their favorite superheroes, the MCU tries to live up to those expectations by including battles like Hulk vs. Thor in Thor Ragnarok and Captain in Marvel vs. Thor in What If. In a recent interview with Marvel's official website, filmmaker Ryan Coogler claimed that he is as powerful as Thor or the Hulk, and explained why it would be challenging for other heroes to stand up to him. One of the oldest characters ever published by Marvel, Namor was described as the offspring of an Atlantean princess and a sea captain. He is also a mutant in the comic books, a trait that the MCU has preserved while making him the Emperor of Talokan. The Submariner, played by actor Tena Huerta, has been dubbed an anti-hero with Mesoamerican origins. 
intelligence. He is described as having superhuman strength in the trailers and other promotional materials. He is also referred to as Kukulkan, the feathered serpent god worshipped by the Yucatec Maya. The reimagining is accurate because Huerta's Namor does have ankle wings and a feathered crown. Introducing Namor to us was actually an opportunity to introduce another politician, another sovereign ruler of a group of people who represents more than himself, according to Kugler, who was speaking about his talents. The Submariner's enhanced talents make it extremely difficult for others to go up against him and win, the director continued. Can't wait to see him in the movie. Now, let's talk about how Namor took Thanos out with a punch. First off, set up for the big moment. The King of Atlantis and the Avengers come face to face with probably the most perilous form of Thanos in the multiverse in a teaser for Avengers number 53, which was published in February. Young Thanos, a spoiled planet raiding menace, poses a threat to Namor, but the avenging son of Atlantis has little patience for young dictators. The worst villains from various Earths have gathered as the multiversal masters of evil, each having killed countless iterations of the Avengers. This squad is on Earth 616 with the intention of capturing it and claiming it as their own. The enigmatic Avenger Prime, who is battling the new masters of evil, has sent an army of Deathlocks, multiversal law enforcers, to Earth 616 to assist the Avengers. The villains launch a complex attack against the Avengers, hitting different locations around the world, including Avengers Mountain, after the Masters of Evil attack the Avengers and capture Ghost Rider. Namor and Valkyrie both offer their assistance when the Avengers are under attack, but as Kid Thanos shows up, it might not be enough. Next, the knockout moment. The heroes have gathered at Avengers Mountain as the preview begins, including Black Panther, Namor, and Valkyrie. Only because Atlantis will be directly impacted by the Avengers' battle against the Masters of Evil has Namor agreed to assist. When Namor is about to act, Kid Thanos suddenly attacks and commands the heroes to bow to his will or they will be slaughtered for science. When Namor enters the fight, he refers to Kid Thanos as a snot-nosed sadist and then strikes him as hard as he can. The preview ends there, leaving readers to speculate as to whether Namor will run across Kid Thanos again, but their exchange here says a lot about Namor's personality. He shows his reputation for being temperamental and grumpy here. Despite being a younger version of Thanos, he is still incredibly powerful, but Namor doesn't seem to care and charges into the fight as if Kid Thanos were a minor antagonist. Namor also has no difficulty belittling his adversaries, and he even does it to Kid Thanos. Lastly, Namor is actually as wild as we thought he'd be. While Namor's gruff demeanor isn't out of character, given his recent role as a true villain in fanning the flames of conflict between Atlantis and the rest of the world, readers will quickly see through Namor's pretense that he's just looking for a fight. Instead, Namor is actually looking for atonement, and throwing himself at Thanos is a good place to start. Most impressively, Namor's fist knocks this Thanos out of the sky. Even while this youthful mad titan lacks the physical presence of Earth 616's native titan, he nevertheless poses a tremendous threat because he has plundered several other realities and used their riches to strengthen his abilities. Namor is a headstrong, frequently impulsive kind of hero, yet his lofty declarations and attack-first mentality make him a surprisingly suitable opponent for Thanos, as he demonstrates by defeating this deadly variation with a single punch. What an unexpected moment for all the Marvel fans. That's a wrap for this video. Are you excited to see Namor in the new Black Panther? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.